Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I am showing you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week. Like always, there are just way more than 10 creations. Links to everybody I'm talking about and more are all in the description below. And if you got any extra time, I highly recommend you check out these designers that I am talking about. Also linked in the description below is our web store, www.brickvault.toys. This week, the instructions that have gone up in the web store are for the custom build of the T-16 Skyhopper by the designer David Buckles. This is a really classic Star Wars ship that basically got little to no screen time. It's got kind of a funny, interesting history within the development of the Star Wars universe, but suffice it to say David did some incredible engineering making this thing look real clean, and it's got an excellent hidden function on the inside. Buying instructions is always a great way to help support what we do here at the channel and the designers we work with. Now let's jump into some honorable mentions of the week. Christmas is coming up soon. Joffrey Bricks titled this White Beard, and this is a version of Santa Claus you definitely wouldn't want to pick a fight with. Aaron Newman has some excellent micro-military vehicles. We don't see enough of these, I don't think, and he did a great job. I love Luis Pena's take on a Bantha. We don't have a Bantha yet. There's definitely some excellent choices made here, and the face keeps cracking me up. Joxon's Iron Bound is very, very disturbing. Love the rib cage and heart on the inside. From the Builder Adam Dodge. This is Boba Fett's transforming helmet. It's a pretty excellent addition to the pre-existing version of this display piece already. From the Builder Iwashi Kazuri, there are so many excellent four stud wide vehicles here. Lego City sets still like to build at this scale, and I used to think you couldn't get any vehicles looking too good at this size, but I have been proven wrong. Librarian Bot built the Resistance J-Wing. It's got kind of a Y-Wing cockpit piece with a B-Wing side body and something else. It's really cool. It kind of rotates at the end with the cannon. From the builder Alien Cat, this is the Joyful Brickman. The Brick Artisan has another amazing design from the classic space theme, or at least with the color combination. This is the LL551 Viper, and this is about as close as you're going to get to a gingerbread house that isn't actually a gingerbread house. It looks like one, but it isn't. This is from the builder Pistache, and it is Santa's Mill. It's a water-powered mill you can see at the bottom. Buttloaf Builds titled this Kiskustos. It's a pretty dynamic looking robot. Midwest Builders has a hardware store at Christmas. I really like those Christmas trees for sale in the corner. It's a really nice touch there. And also from the Avro Brothers, they don't build too often or at least post pictures too often, but when they do, it is well worth it. This is Robocop. All right, I've been showing some work in progress pics throughout the last several weeks or maybe a month or more. From the designer Remco Rohan, we finally have some finalized shots of the Imperial Nebulon. This this is an excellent, excellent model. It looks like built at basically the same scale as let's say more ESVs Nebulon B, but based on the design initially outlined by EC Henry. That's a digital model maker who has been playing around with the Star Wars universe in a really fun way. And in this particular case, the Nebulon B, usually operated by the Rebels, actually started off as an Imperial ship. And the idea is that this is what the more armored and clean original version of the ship looked like before being subverted into the Rebels version Version, which is a bit more uh, bare bones, you might say. It's such an excellent model. And then I've been looking for an excuse to show off some of these fun robot builds from David7, and he finally gave me some. The title here is Ark and Ark 2 again in action. We have these sort of robot cops walking through a dystopian, almost post-apocalyptic city. The details here are awesome. And then this one also gets me a lot, uh, mostly because he has so many great details and then decided to go with the basic smiley face for these military troopers. That's the title here. And it makes it all the more creepy and scary. Like they're just these weird, happy zombie robot guys. And it looks like they are just wreaking havoc on the population. Anyways, this is just an awesome way to integrate robotic features into a minifig scale. I think he does it better than anybody else. And now we're jumping down to build number eight, another amazing digital render from Lego Nuts. The title is Floating Market. The colors here are excellent. I love all the different 
things that you can see being sold on the uh, different ships. Some are different colored hair pieces made to look like, I don't know, durian or something. There's all kinds of fruit, vegetables, sea, life. Great characters from both in the boats and on the sides of the walkway. And the water also looks surprisingly clear. I've been to a floating market before and it's usually not something that looks like that. Number seven is a build from Mitsuru Nikaido. He is at it again. He's got some amazing mech based animals. He sticks with a very consistent build style. And this builder has a way of making mechanical creatures look even more lifelike than if he had tried to make them look realistic. The different poses he can manage to get the crab to stay in is pretty incredible. This particular mechanical feature also has a transforming function, which isn't something he normally puts together, but looks like it worked out for this one. And what can I say? I'm just a real big fan of hermit crabs. It looks like it could be the size of a very large one in real life. From the builder Woomy World, uh, this is Glutton's Child. Don't ask me to explain this one. I have no answers. The face almost reminds me of something like a seal, but of course the teeth are in strange places, and I'm pretty sure that's an alien kind of tongue sticking out of the mouth, not a creature that Glutton's Child is eating. It's hard to tell though. I love the simple red eyes. The tentacles sticking out really do give you an idea that this is a big fat just head that eats. That's really all it is. And thematically that I think is exactly what the designer was going for. Very creepy, very interesting. And now we have a really fun one from James Zahn. This is Diving Ghost. The description's a bit dark as you could probably guess, but the ghost diver looks so fun and animate. Kind of cartoony and somewhat friendly, a little goofy. At least I get that with the, uh, the big cartoony prints for the eyes and the fact that he's holding his hands up in the air like a spooky person trying to pretend to be a ghost would actually do. I like the inclusion of maybe the claws or perhaps tentacles that are sticking out from inside the diving mask. The fat bloated body has a pretty rounded and consistent shape from the legs to the stomach and the colors pop extremely well on this figure. The gray base makes everything else feel even more colorful the further and further you look away from it. Number four is a very small build, but it's extremely animate from the designer My Snail Eats Pizza. <laughs> That's a weird name. Uh, the build here is called Lone Wolf. Every piece here is the exact shape and size that it needs to be in order to show off the details of this wolf design. If I'm being perfectly honest, it's a bit skinny and reminds me a little bit more of a fox, but there's so much posability and animated things that you can do with this small black build. I like that the tail has the ability to bend a little bit. There's a few different joints in the actual bushy tail. The legs and paws have multiple points of articulation. Also, the neck can come up and down. The head can rotate and swivel, and it looks like we got just the right amount of pieces to make an extremely good looking shape for the head. This might not be a very big build, but it certainly gets across every detail that I think this designer was going for. Now we're jumping over to number three, a designer we haven't shown off in quite a long time. This is easily one of my favorite brick built jets of the entire year. From Asgardian Studio, this is the SU-57 Felon. The details are absolutely incredible. I really appreciate that he also made a fully fleshed out cockpit for this particular build. Usually when designers are building scaled planes like this, there's a tendency to just go with clear cheese wedge pieces to give an indication of a cockpit. Not the case here. Also, the ship is extremely thin for its pretty massive size. This is an accurate detail and I think it really benefits the model. I love the slope shaping that we have along the top of the jet. And of course the color detailing isn't hurting at all. The angles along the sides of the wings are especially uh, advanced there. And out of all the cool jets I've seen throughout the year, this is probably the one that I would wanna have uh, up here in the Lego studio on display. Now we're jumping down to a wonderful organic build from Montgomery Burns. This is a spot in a famous university in Mokotau according to the description. And we just have some amazing organic detailing, especially the stuff that's growing along the sides of the buildings. It's very easy to see the different types of vines that are creeping up the edge of these stone walls. We have wisteria, I believe on one side, that's with the pink and uh, magenta flowers that are hanging down. It's extremely easy to see the ivy. Those plant pieces I have not seen side studded into walls until now and now it makes perfect sense. It really does look a lot like ivy leaves. 
The stone ground and gardens that make up the main patio in the center also have some excellent details. I love the arching shapes in the sides of the buildings, whether it's doors or windows. I love this build. The details really do make this place feel like a real spot in time. Now we're jumping on to the last build of the week. It feels like this builder didn't give me a choice. I just had to show this one whether I liked it or not. There's just too much weird, interesting stuff happening here to ignore. From the builder Big Stannis, this is Rome Total War 2000. So I think this is imagery from like a video game from back then, but that is a million miles away from why this design is interesting. Let's zoom up on this uh, Roman captain's face, or who knows, he could be an emperor. It's That's besides the point. Look at the details that make up the face of this character and tell me this isn't the craziest thing you've seen built in Lego ever. The chin is a series of different hair pieces upside down. The outlining around the mouth are two different Jar Jar Binks heads or Gungan heads. The interior is also a series of different hair pieces. Also, that is a pink brush that makes up the tongue. Rice hats for the cheeks, droid feet for the nostrils. I can't quite identify some of that stuff that is around the eyes. I'm pretty sure those are skateboard wheels that make up the actual black points in the eyes. But zooming out, there is just a bunch of weird stuff that makes up all the details here. And it absolutely blew my mind when I saw it. If you want to see a designer, a Lego builder that is truly free and does weird stuff with bricks, it'd be very hard to find somebody who shakes things up in a strange way more than Big Stannis. Whether it's the themes that this designer decides to take on, or the build style used to achieve them, this builder's headspace is simply in a different place than almost anybody else that I have seen on the internet. You, sir! That moment basically outlines exactly how I feel about this designer. And with that, uh, we are done with top 10 mocks of the week. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like, subscribe, comment, share, turn on notifications, or do whatever it is that you want to do. Remember, if you got any extra time, check out those designers that I have linked in the description below. If you got any extra, extra time, there's always our web store, www.brickvault.toys. Thanks again for sticking around to the end of this video, and we will see you next time at Brick Vault. <laughs>